Hey, what's happening guys? It's Mark back in the shrimp room on Mark's Aquatics. On today's little episode, I thought what I'd do is take you through how to grow sweet potatoes in your aquarium, okay? Now, this guy I've been following for quite a number of years now, called Michael Langerman, he, um, he's, uh, he plants all kinds of stuff in uh, two litre coke bottles and different things and brings them on. He's a really interesting guy. Go and check his channel out if you haven't seen him before. But I thought, after watching one of his videos a couple of years ago, I thought I'd, um, I'd, I thought I'd give this a go and see if I can grow one in my aquarium with the heated water. With, it, with the water being a bit warmer, I thought it might have affected the growing a little bit more. But they're from warmer countries anyway, the old sweet potato, so I thought they might put up with it. And um, I put, over the last sort of month or so, I put this little video together on how to grow them. But before... I get into that I thought what I'd do is I'll just go up there because you remember you had, we had all these little baby lemon blue-eyed lemons come out they're all out the pot now what I've done is I've moved out all the all the adults now because obviously this isn't a massive tank and I wanted to make sure that the water parameters stayed spot on for these little guys so um, by taking four big plecos out which produce a lot of waste as we know with our plecos it's going to cut that waste down by quite a lot so that's what I've done but um, we had the other we had the long the long fin albino bristle noses which were in one of the other pots which I've moved out now but they've hatched out and I've moved them now into a little pot up here I'll just go upstairs into their little pot I've taken them out and as you can see we've got another heap of baby little plecos in there now that's the last time I'm going to let these guys breed up here and downstairs as well if they do breed they'll just let them go in the bottom tank but I'll try and split them up into different tanks now and give them a bit of a break but you can see we've got a right little mixture there if you look in amongst them some of them up on the glass here the long albino they're going to be long finned albinos in amongst the bubbles there you can see them but if you look down in amongst you'll see some oh, sorry you'll see some of them are white and some of them have got dark coloration on so that's a bit of a throwback gene there which is gone in so they're going to be interesting looking as they get a little bit older be nice to see those both of them were male and female long nose bristle nose long fin albinos and as you can see there's a slight little variation there in difference you can see the darker ones there in that little pocket there but we've got quite a few out and it'd be nice to see that these guys turn out like like i say all the other ones are doing really well little spotties down there younger bristle noses tend to have the spots and they tend to disappear as, over time as they get older and then the little lemons are also doing extremely well doing their little vacuuming jobs all around the tank keeping everything clean gave a nice piece of broccoli yesterday off a stem and that's the only piece that's left of the stem the shrimps and all the baby plecos have made short work of that overnight. As we know, our plecos like are more nocturnal and they like to come out at night and feed when there's a little bit more peace and quiet. Lots of little baby little shrimp all over the place, all over the leaves. And loads of them on top of the sponge filter there, if you can see. And all down the sides. Look at that. Right, let's get into this sweet potato growing. If you go up into my pleco tank here, you can see I've got a nice little sweet potato there on a little stainless steel wire that I made in my workshop. Now I had this from when I had my coral room and I used to make different um, designs with the uh, branching Acropora rock, um, the staghorn rock, the dead decayed stuff which was just basically calcium carbonate and I just drill holes in each side and put them together and make some nice little effects before I used to plug the corals onto them to make it look a little bit more natural but that's stainless steel, you can use that in aquariums because that's not going to decay or degrade and pollute your aquarium but this little potato that you see here is a white fleshed variety now most of us are used to the, um, the, the orangey the orangey pink one. I've got I've got two orange ones in here as well. They're at different stages. I'll show you them in a minute. But I've just put this one in, and it's a little. They're a little bit rounder. I got this at my local supermarket. Give it a good wash first, 
and then basically what I did, if I can bring it out for you, is I've just shoved that right the way through the middle, and when it came out the bottom there, I've just turned it around on itself and then slid it back up inside itself, so it's got its own little hanger. There's many ways you can do this. You can do this with a couple of forks each side if you want to bring them on in a cup first or you can whatever it, it really depends on the size of, of the kind of tank that you've got really um, whether or not you've got an open top yes whether, well, you know whether you've got an open top tank a rimless tank if you've got one with obviously with a lid on it this isn't going to be really very good um, because obviously the, the, the leaves and things are going to want to go up to the light and they're not going to get out of the top of your tank so if you've got an open tank this is perfect if you've got a sump better still because you can grow them in a sump and um, they're going to really reduce those nitrates down in your water okay and it's going to be out the way and you're going to have a nice little plant growing in your sump as well so that's a super place to put them if you've got if you've got them now these things take I would say two to three weeks before you'll start seeing little tiny roots I'm not sure if you can see it here, you can just see that little tiny little bit of pink there that's just the start of a little root coming out now they'll tend to root first and then all the little buds will come out from all the way around the base here and then grow up the sides now I've got one, a pink one here which is next to it, which is its little mate I've just readjusted myself here a minute and I'll bring you over well, there you go now that's what happens after I would say maybe three weeks, maybe a little bit more, depends on obviously on maybe on the on the potato itself, the conditions it's kept in, harder water, softer water. This is very soft water in here because it's my zebra fleco tank. But you can see those little shoots are firing away and they're going past the light. So I'm gonna to have to raise that light up or rig up another light over this tank so I can keep it going in there and what I'm going to do as they get older I'm just going to literally as they get to a certain height I'm just going to pinch those tops out and by doing that you're going to you're going to encourage side growth okay and you can literally bonsai these and it's quite interesting because I've done it with other plants before I've actually grown normal potatoes in aquariums before but these have got lovely red like variegated leaves on them so they're, they're a lot more attractive than the normal potatoes Potatoes have got a finer root system as well, which really does hang down and it's great for your fry to go in amongst and put them in fry tanks if you're bringing up fry places for them to hide and stuff like that. But they've got a lovely red, red leaf. I'm not sure if this one's going to be the same. I've never grown one with them um, with the white flesh before, but I'm not sure what flavour, you know, what flavour, sorry, what type of, uh, of leaf coloration that that's going to have. So they put out a huge root system, we'll just go underneath the water now and have a look at that. You can see the massive root system that they do put out. And you'll find then, as... Let me just get back there. You'll see as those runners come out the sides, you can see those young ones coming out from the base and then they grow up the side. They don't come out the top and they come up and afterwards they start putting their own little root systems out if you can see on that one there so you can literally you can snap those off plant them into pots and grow some sweet potatoes if you like just like normal potatoes would do you, that's where the eyes are on a normal potato and they push out the the roots there first and then then they come out and as that decays that one plant then will become a couple of plants and you'll get lots of lots of spuds growing in the uh, in your little tubs or in your borders but you can see the root systems that are coming out from these. So you can literally you can snip them off and grow them, which is interesting. I might actually take a few of them off and put them in for this summer and see what sort of a crop I get, which will be quite interesting. Now down below, <clears throat> what I've done is I've moved all my baby, well they're not babies anymore, all my, all my baby, uh, which were babies. Look at that guy, he's stunning that guy, I do like him. All my little betters and I've put in another one under here. Now this one's even further along if you have a look and this one's higher. It's climbing right up for the light but I've got all the better in there now because I've taken them out of the bench tank because I'm going to be doing different breeding things and I've got to get a few different species in for you guys that you've asked me to breed but as you can see now this one it's got greener leaves than the other one which had more of a purple leaf which is interesting 
But what I'm saying is about taking the tops off. If you basically just go in there with your thumb and finger and you just pinch that little that little top bit off there like that. Okay, now that's going to encourage a shoot now to grow from in there and from in there and you're going to bush them out more so they're not going to get really high and leggy because they're going to run for the light so that's what I that's what I'm going to do I'm just going to pick all these little tips off and they come off super easy and that's going to encourage that now you're going to get a little bit of you can see there you're going to get a little bit of white sap come out you see but that'll soon dry up it basically comes out like that so it heals it's like um, antibacterial thing so it bleeds out seals and nothing else then can get in there and contaminate the plant so it's its own little protective system but that's got a massive root system on this one if I lift that out of the water for you you can see look at the size of that root system now that's going to be sucking all those nitrates out of the water keeping everything healthy so it's like a, an extra little filter hello little mates you know come and say hello can I come and say hello? Cute little guys, aren't they? They certainly are cute little guys. But there you go. So we've got your three stages there of how to grow them. And literally, it's just stick a spike through the middle or how, however you want to hold it in your tank. You can rig up your own little holders. It doesn't matter if you stick a hole through these things or a spike through the side if you want to create some kind of sucker system and you can spike something through here with four suckers on stick it to the side of your tank um, use your imaginations and come up with your own little little ways of holding them and let me know how you get on with yours because it's, um, it's, it's an interesting little project and like I said you can do a lot of things with them you can, you can grow them in your gardens and your borders and with the summer coming here in the UK it's going to be interesting it be nice to see who at the end of the year gets the biggest crop of sweet potatoes and we can take pictures you can go onto my Facebook group and post pictures on there which would be nice to see but then we've got this one here like I said that's that stage again you'll you'll see those little furry little, little roots come out first and then those little leaves will come out from the bottom and they'll get going and once they get going they really do they really do get going I'm going to take the top of that one off now I think as well so we can encourage some side growth on that but that's brilliant stuff. Now when the root systems get really big on these, you can, you can trim them down. Don't be frightened to trim the roots down to shape them because they're always going to be putting new roots out all the time and it's not going to do them any harm. So if you get like too much of a root system, you can trim one side off, literally shape it like a hedge underneath the water. It doesn't really make that much difference. And they're super soft as well. You can literally just take, take them off and just snip them off. I'm going to let them go in here. I'm not too fussed about the root system getting as big as it can in here because it's something where the plecos are going to come up and they'll feed on the on the little bits of algae and things that, that, that attach themselves to it and grow over time. But it's an interesting little project guys. Go and get yourself some sweet potatoes, give it a go and see how you get on. It will really will lower your nitrates in your tank just like pothos plants do, just like these guys that I've got next door here which as you can see also put out huge root systems as well and they are great little nitrate suckers in your tank and they'll keep your water crystal clear and lovely and clean and really be beneficial you can see there's a mixture of pothos in there and the sweet potato as well so that's pretty good there's Mr. Man there gardening his pot saying what are you doing putting sweet potatoes in my tank all these guys are still in their pot. I haven't shown a torch in there, so I'm not sure what's going on with those. Whether they got some more young in there or what's going on. But we shall wait and see. I don't like to uh, flash a torch in there as often as I would like to. Just to see what's going on in case I spook them and we don't want that. Anyway, that's a nice little project for you guys to have a go at. If you've got an open top tank, like I say, it looks fantastic. You can put a little light above it. Keep it down, keep it nice and short bonsai it slightly, trim them roots up and just have fun with your aquariums, that's what it's all about, that's what I've always done it's not all about show tanks for me, I know you get a lot of these aquascapes and things, they're actually pristine and it's that to me is, um, it's fine, everyone's got their own taste but um, it's not my cup of tea, I don't really like these perfectly scaped tanks and things, I like an aquarium to look like an aquarium where you can get your hands in 
get yourself into it as well just like this here a little bit of a mix up all over the place create the tank with all the leaves in all the bits just drifting around like they would be in nature happy little guys that's what we want happy little fish and happy little shrimps and it doesn't cost a fortune to set these things up that's the one thing I like and that I like to, to promote on my channel is that you don't need to spend a great deal of money on an aquarium setup to make it look to make it look nice and to keep you active in the hobby some people just like a huge tank that they can just sit down and watch and not do much to they just like watching the fish other people like to get their hands dirty and get them in there moving things around making things look nice setting up little tanks that's more of my my kind of thing I just love the the hobby for that for that reason and that's just for breeding purposes and all that stuff and it just keeps you in the with the water chemistry and everything else and it keeps you busy and then you can sit down and look at it and relax and chill out and look at what you've done and be happy with what you've done and it's nice to see everything thriving after the effort that you've put in anyway guys as always your stars love your loads grab yourself some sweet potatoes and I'll see you on the next episode of Mark's Aquatics. Bye for now. Just me and my guitar.